Let's check out a couple of super fast bed slingers today. Over here, I've got Bamboo Labs A1, and over here, Anycubics Cobra 3. They're both uh, approximately the same speed, they're both about the same size, and they both have AMSs. But don't call it an AMS, it's not really an AMS. It is an ACE. ACE. We already know about Bamboo's A1, which earned four and a half stars out of five when I reviewed it for Tom's Hardware. It also got high marks for being the fastest bed slinger we'd reviewed at that time. But what about the Anycubic Cobra 3? The original Cobra was one of my favorite bed slingers, and it was my first printer to have an inductive bed leveling probe, a real game changer at the time. However, the original Cobra isn't very fast by today's standards. The Cobra 2 was Anycubic's attempt to catch up with Bamboo's speed. And it fell a bit short because the machine, while ridiculously solid, doesn't have clipper. So it has real issues with ringing. There was a Cobra 2 Pro that had clipper and should have been marvelous, but the one I got has a bad board and it was never reviewed. Now that you're up to date, let's take a closer look at the Cobra 3. It's far superior to any of the 2s, though I'm a little miffed they gave up on their signature colors for an aluminum frame that looks a bit too much like the competition. It has clipper with an accelerometer, so it can do input shaping. Plus, it's got a load of sensors on it to find the bed level and nozzle height. Now, I have to say the sensor on my printer is a little whacked, so the nozzle height isn't quite perfect, but I was able to make an adjustment in the slicer software. It's not ideal, but there is that workaround, and hopefully this is just a problem on my machine. Let's take a look at some more stats. The Cobra 3 combo is retailing for $549, which includes the four color Ace. It's currently on sale for $449, which is a pretty good price. The Bamboo Lab A1 combo with that four color AMS light retails for $559, and it's also on sale for $489, so just a tad more. The Cobra 3 is listing a top speed of 600 millimeters a second. The slicer defaults are set more conservatively, which isn't unusual at all, with a 200 millimeters a second inner wall, 160 millimeters outer wall, and 300 for the infill. Travel moves are also held back to conservative 300 millimeters a second. Bamboo's A1 lists a top speed of 500 millimeters a second, but it actually uses more of it. The slicer default speed is 300 millimeters a second on the inner wall with 200 millimeters on the outer wall and 270 for the infill. The travel moves zip along at 700 millimeters a second. I can't find stats on the Cobra 3 acceleration rate, but I can tell you the slicer tops out at 10,000 millimeters per second square while printing. The A1 doesn't push so hard with a max acceleration of 600 millimeters per second squared. However, the A1 has that same turbo setting as its Core XY brethren, so if you feel comfortable launching ludicrous mode, it's at your fingertips. All these speed numbers are somewhat moot because they're restricted by the size and complexity of your model. It's just like your car. Your speedometer might say you can do 120, but that doesn't mean you can drag race in your driveway. Printers are also throttled by the flow rate of the hot end, and these two printers seem to be pretty evenly matched. Again, this is going to come down to slicer settings. Now, as a single color printer, I think it's absolutely brilliant. But it's time to talk about multicolor. The Cobra 3 has what they're calling the Anycubic Color Engine. This is not an AMS, it's an ACE. Each spool has its own Bowden tube, so there's less chance of filament tangling up as it goes straight from the spool right over to the machine. Yes, there's a lot of tubes, but we can deal with this. The ACE brings something new to the table. It doubles as a filament dryer. If you have some Petchy that's soggy, you can put it in here to dry out and then come back in a couple hours to print it. It also has the option of drying while it prints. There's a setting for TPU, which we know really needs to be dried frequently, but you can't run TPU in the ACE. It just gets tangled up in the rollers. You can use a spool holder with a fifth tube, but I found it to be a little short. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm just gonna run it like this. I don't wanna remove all those tubes for just this one print. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and if you could poke the like button, it would really help my channel grow. Thanks. So let's get to the question I know you're all asking. 
does the Cobra 3 poop? Any cubic is using a mechanism similar to bamboo's printers. When it swaps colors, the filament is cut inside the tool head, then reeled back onto the spool. This method leaves a few millimeters of melty filament inside the hot end that has to be pushed out, resulting in little squiggles of filament waste we affectionately call poop. It's hard to avoid poops, but Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer have lots of ways to reduce wasted filament. You can adjust the amount purged for each color, you can use purge as an infill, and you can also turn the purge waste into another model. If you want to know more about using Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer to reduce your filament poops, check out this video dedicated to reducing filament waste with your Bamboo Lab AMS printer. Sadly, it's not going to help you with the Cobra 3, at least not yet. I don't think any cubic watched my video. See, they released the Cobra 3 without the ability to manage purge waste. And even worse, this printer is not currently compatible with Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer. But if they make a change in a future update, I'll let you know by adding something to the description. This method of swapping colors is always going to waste some filament, but it doesn't have to be this bad. On this vase, it made more poop than it made print. And that's just unacceptable. This is using Green Gate Pet G, which cost $32 a spool. That's 3.2 cents a gram. So while this vase only needs $5.88 worth of filament to print, it wasted another $6.24 in poop. At this rate, I'm throwing over half my spool right in the recycle bin. And yes, you can recycle your filament scraps. If you're interested in learning more about that, let me know in the comments. I'm lucky enough to live about 20 minutes from Printerior, a company that turns consumer waste into recycled filament. And that's where I send all of my filament waste. Now let's take a look at that slicer situation. Part of the problem is that Anycubic built their slicer on the framework of Prusa Research's open source Prusa Slicer. It's an excellent slicer that we all know and love, but Prusa Slicer is designed to work with Prusa printers and they handle color completely different. Their slicer was designed around the Prusa MMU, which uses a complex retraction system to quickly yank filament out of the hot end, leaving just a little waste in the nozzle that it has to wipe off on a purge block. I printed some four color models on both the Cobra 3 and the Bamboo Lab A1 to get an idea how they compare in the poop department. Both printers use the same settings, three walls and 10% infill. For the A1, I was able to turn on flush to infill and reduce the purge mount to 0.6, which is my standard setting for clean color swaps while minimizing the waste. I didn't use purge objects to show how much can be saved with very little effort by the user. The quality on both of these dragons is superb for both printers with nice, crisp color swaps. I have to admit, they both wasted a lot of filament. but the Cobra 3 wasted 56 more grams of filament, and although I can improve the A1's performance by fine-tuning the purge and adding a purge object, there's nothing to be done for the Cobra 3. Another issue with any cubic slicer is that it doesn't understand 3MF files, so if you get a model that's been broken into colors by the designer, it won't work, which is really frustrating and time-consuming, because you'll have to hand-paint the colors. Anycubic has reassured me that they will improve filament tuning in a future update. And I hope that they do, because the Cobra 3 is a great little printer. It's just stuck with a very bad slicer. And as it stands right now, if you buy a Cobra 3, you're going to get a lot of poop.